Well, President Bola Tinubu on Thursday gave a marching order to Nigeria's military and security agencies on the need to clamp down on illegal miners dotting the nation's landscape. He also assured that the government will ensure that companies engaged in mineral exploration, prioritizing the health and safety of Nigerians and their host communities. The president, who spoke while receiving a presentation titled Harnessing the Mining Industry for Enhanced National Security and Development, Strategic Options for Nigeria by 2035 by Course 32, participants of the National Defense College in Abuja, directed security agencies to intensify efforts to crack down on illegal miners across the country. A former spokesperson for the Nigerian Air Force, Group Captain Sadiq Shehu, retired, joins us now to discuss these policies and more. Great to have you here on Newsday. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much and good afternoon, viewers. Well, Captain, what do you make of the president's directive? Uh, he made this in order to make sure that uh, the mining sector has as much uh, uh, backing as he can give. What do you make of these, uh, these statements? Well, first we have to say Nigeria haven't been a mono economy for a long time. The discovery or the realization that the country has uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, mineral resources in different parts of the country is a welcome development to enable Nigeria to tap and turn her economy into a multi-source kind of economy, which uh, many experts have agreed is the source of Nigeria's problem. The sole reliance on petroleum and uh, petroleum products as source of income. So having been that, having seen that, we have to say that uh, safeguarding the mineral resources, the way they are exploited, the people who do the exploitation, you know, it has links with security. What do I mean by link with security? All over the world, you know, mineral resources have been a source of conflict. And uh, whenever you know how things like diamond, gold, bauxite, or whatever, been exploited, if care is not taken, such mining sites uh, become a source of uh, security problem in three ways. First. They are places that uh, illegal uh, miners, criminals, gangs can assemble and start their businesses there. They are also known to be areas where there will be proliferation of small arms and light weapons. All kinds of uh, bad things can happen in a mining site. Thirdly, and more importantly also, if there is no security in the places where these uh, resources are being exploited, certainly the government will lose control of the area the government will lose the revenue that is supposed to come to them. And even the people that are there, there could be environmental damage because the people that are exploiting the resources without proper checking, all they're interested is bringing the resources out. What happens to the environment, whether it is a fishing village, whether it is a farming area, it is none of their business. You know, so this is the reason where it is both an economic problem, a social problem, and also a security challenging program. So if the president said he's given a marching order to the military to put an end to it, it is uh, a long, uh, it's, a, it's a very good uh, way of uh, looking at the problem. However, my problem is that uh, whenever you give an assignment to any of the branches of the services, there needs to be coordination. Because uh, not too long ago, I had uh, the Ministry of uh, Natural Resources also talking about uh, setting up uh, another task force or whatever with the National Security and Civil Defense Corps that they will be on illegal mining. So what I would call is collaboration and harmony so that we are all working towards objective, not giving the task to this uh, organization and then another organization. In the long run, a lot of things will fall into the crack. So there has to be you know, synergy and coordination. Who is really in charge? And uh, when you say like the military is... Uh, is going to be in charge. Uh, traditionally, it is not a role for the military. However, the president is, uh, has the prerogative to say he wants the military to act on it. But if that is done, you have to make sure that the military unit or the section that is given that task is uh, appropriately equipped and designed to do anti-illegal mining operations, which of course is different from war operation, which the military is going, is uh, different from counter-insurgency operation and the rest. That is just the issue I want to highlight. 
And you're right, because um, one could say that with the military intervention, some heavy handedness might cause more harm than uh, good within the illegal mining sector. But I wanted to pick up on something you said about uh, the immediate threats posed to miners in the communities. What exactly are they? And um, do you think that this task force of about 60, I think that the uh, Federal Ministry of Solid Materials and Development have created to suss out uh, purveyors of illegal mining, is this, um, is this going to be enough? Well, uh, what is required apart from proper equipping, proper training, because like I said, this is uh, uh, a task that usually is not a task of the military. So some certain kind of specialization in terms of equipment and training is, uh, and also a mindset, because definitely when you are going for anti-illegal mining operation, the mindset is different from, for example, when you are going to fight Boko Haram or when you are going to fight counter-insurgency. So that mindset is also necessary. And uh, with regards to the threats to the communities, different uh, harms can come to a community that is besieged. Even now, you know, we have a lot of uh, information of where people, because even the mining, there's supposed to be a scientific way of doing the mining. If you leave artisanal mines to go without, uh, you know, without regulation, sometimes you have accident in the mines. People get buried in the mines. You have people, even uh, diseases could break there because the water sources of the community could get contaminated with lead and other, yeah, other chemicals that can bring health hazards to the community. So with all these are issues, and even the issue of uh, we are battling of, uh, with uh, out-of-school children in areas where this mining is going. If it is not checked, you will find that there will be child labor and all that is that will affect all that, or bring other socioeconomic problems to the issue. So it's a conglomerate of harms that can, that can uh, happen in an all-regulated mine sector. But like I said, all in all, there should be a coordinated effort. There should be, uh, you know, who is in charge, who is not in charge. If it is the military, let the military handle it. If it is going to be a combined team, there should be coordination and cooperation and, uh, you know, synergy between all the agencies that are involved in this operation. Very well said. And with illegal mining, why is it uh, so much? Why have the numbers of illegal mines uh, increased in the last couple of years? And what is the link between illegal mining and insurgency currently? Well, uh, we, we arrive at this problem because, uh, like, you, like I said, earlier on, all our attention in Nigeria, as far as government is concerned, is on uh, petroleum resources. Nobody was paying attention. But mining, by nature, is an international enterprise. What do I mean? Somebody who is used to mining, who is in Mali, could get information that there is bauxite or there is gold in a certain area in Nigeria, even before the local community knows. Uh, while I was working with... Uh, with the African Union sometimes in 2015-16, uh, um, uh, I happened to visit a country like uh, Central Africa Republic. You will be surprised, I found miners from Kano, Nigeria, that are operating in Central Africa Republic. And while I was discussing with them, they said by the time they arrived Central Africa Republic, even the people in Central Africa Republic did not know that there were diamonds in Central Africa Republic. It's the same thing with Nigeria. Once, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the people, because of uh, hard years of experience, they may not go to school. But what I find is that uh, a miner who is used to mining, even by looking at the geology, at the kind of stones that are there, without using any instruments, he can have an idea that there is bauxite or there is uh, gold or there is diamond here. And once this story goes out, it goes to different countries. There are people, miners are like cowboys. Whenever they hear there is a deposit discovered somewhere, they can move from different countries to come. Now, if they enter a country like Nigeria, where our mining regulations are very lax, they will go through the tax in these legal procedures and come and set up, uh, you know, enterprises. Because we have stories now of Chinese going into the hinterlands without any uh, government registration and exploiting mineral resources. We also have people from Mali, from Burkina Faso, miners from all over the place because they found an unregulated terrain initially. So, but what the federal government is doing now is to bring this regulation which should have been in place before. Without it, you have different kind of characters. Some come for the mining. Some come for even illegal trade. Some come to even uh, sell uh, weapons and ammunition. So definitely, again, like I said earlier, mining and criminality and, uh, you know, proliferation of arms, they are all linked. 
uh, a lot of writers in conflict and security studies have written extensively about the link between mineral resources and uh, conflict. They are always linked because eventually, while some would be mining, some will be interested in even robbing what has been mined and selling it. There's a lot of black market activities going there. So you cannot talk of mining areas unless you have very strong regulatory uh, measures. There is bound to be conflict. There is bound to be uh, insurgents. They are, insurgents, in any case, they are also looking for sources of money. So if they can you know, uh, put some of their resources into illegal mining and make sure they have money to buy arms and ammunition, then you see it's a vicious circle. One thing leading to another. And you're right, without regulation, the mining industry will uh, turn into a wild, wild west, and we hope to keep it from uh, getting worse. Group Captain Sadiq Sheh, who retired, great to have you on the show with me today. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday.